Welcome back to our Walk in the Word. We are still in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew. The Sermon on the Mount covers chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew's Gospel. We are in chapter 6 still, uh, looking at verses 16 through verse number 18, talking about this matter of spiritual fasting. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fasteth, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Fasting has been practiced for various reasons throughout history. Uh, the pagans fasted in ancient times because they believed that evil spirits entered their body through food. And so uh, they would fast from food because they wanted to ward off evil spirits. Speaking of that, uh, the word wake, uh, when you wake a dead body, it comes from uh, ancient African uh, cultural belief uh, that people would stay up all night with a dead body because they believed that evil spirits would come in and inhabit the body. And so they would stay awake all night long with a dead body to make sure no evil spirit entered. That's where we get the word wake from because they stayed awake all night with a dead body. Well, the pagans stayed away from food. They abstained from food because they believed that Evil spirits or demons would enter their body through food. That was a pagan belief. Uh, and then people in modern culture fast for various reasons, sometimes for purely uh, physical or cosmetic reasons. Uh, maybe they want to get in a tight dress or maybe they want to, um, you know, it's for medical reasons, before you take a blood test or before you take an exam. Uh, people fast for all kinds of reasons. But fasting in the Bible always had a spiritual purpose and is never presented as having any value in and of itself. If you fast, uh, God blesses it. If you don't fast, God does not curse it. Fasting is not a good or evil. Uh, fasting is not a, a commandment of God. Uh, both the Old and the New Testament speaks favorably of fasting but it is shown to be an entirely compulsory, voluntary act and not a spiritual duty to be practiced like, like giving and praying. The Bible has specific commandments when it comes to giving, specific commandments when it comes to praying. But fasting is what a person can or cannot do or does or does not do. It, does, it doesn't have any spiritual value other than you are going to God for a special purpose or you're going to God for a special reason. But what Jesus is talking about here is pretentious fasting and the proper way to fast. Pretentious fasting is in verse 16. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. The Pharisees would fast twice a week, uh, and they would choose days where the most amount of people would be on the streets so that they could disfigure their faces and that they could uh, make themselves look uh, holier than they really were. They would purposely tear their clothes and, and have a disheveled appearance, uh, and they made sure it was on days when people would go to the market or people would come out of their villages and out of towns to go uh, to the public square because they wanted to publicly fast. But God says, if you do it that way, if you are pretentious that way, as a matter of fact, he calls them hypocrites. Uh, a hypocrite is a play actor. God says, if you're going to play act in fasting, uh, don't do it because you already have your reward. If you make yourself appear as something that you're not, that's play acting. That's hypocrisy. And he said the Pharisees twice a week fasted and they were fastidious about their fast. They were 
always making sure that the, the biggest crowd that could be amassed could see them fasting and so they would disfigure themselves. He says, you already have your reward. God doesn't hear that kind of, that kind of fast. God pays no attention to that kind of fast because it's pretentious and pompous and it's for the benefit of men and not to reach God for any particular purpose. But a proper way to fast is in verses 17 and 18. But when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. That word, anoint your head and wash your face, means to take a bath, to, to, to groom yourself, to not have this appearance of being disheveled and out of sorts or looking sad and having a countenance that people would ask you what's wrong and then you'll tell them, no, I'm fasting. That's not what God rewards. Or if you are seriously praying about something and you're fasting and you're looking like you lost 20 pounds and someone asks, what's the problem? You'll tell them, I'm fasting. That If you've got to tell somebody you're doing it, you're doing it for the wrong reason. That's like giving somebody something and then bragging about that you had to give somebody something. God does not, does not reward that. That's a dead deed for you to give and then talk about your giving or for you to be in prayer about something and mention all the time that you are in prayer about something or you need somebody to be praying with you about something in a pretentious, pompous kind of self-righteous way. Uh, Self-righteousness is pride. And pride always goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. God will never reward that kind of pride and that kind of pretentious fasting. Look with me in Isaiah at chapter 58. Isaiah at chapter 58, verses 5 through verse number 9. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul, is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Would thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thy face from his own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall bring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking of vanity. If you do it in a vain, repetitious, kind of self-righteous, Pharisaic way, God is not pleased with it. But if the fast is to reach God for a particular purpose, if you're asking God for something especially, and you're concentrating, concentrating on it earnestly, then God rewards that kind of fast, but he does not bring us to the fast for us to be self-righteous. Thank you so much for joining us for our walk in the Word. Look forward to seeing you again on next week. God bless you.